Um, Edwin, are you sure you don't want to sell the deck? I mean, there's nothing like. Yeah. Do you have everybody has a price? There's no nothing. Come no, on. It's no. Nah, I don't pressure. want to sell it. No. Sell, sell the no, deck. Nah. Sell, I don't want to sell it. Buy 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 we got the cards. We didn't even have to pay for them. Don't even do it. I don't know if he's. I think he's still away. Oh hell yeah! Look at that shit. Look at this. Look at this. Hell yeah! Yeah, you wonder how often that's that's how we make fucking money around here. Yeah, you like that shit? Yeah. Hey everybody, Rudy, Alpha Investments. Today, we are at the card store with Edwin over here, Magic Engineer. Hey everybody. You can see a link in the description. He has his own channel with a similar videos and everything from the event that we held. And we wanted to show you a deck called Turbo, T Turbo Stasis that he created. So come in and take a look. Pretty much his whole deck is draw a lot of cards, lock them out with Stasis, lock them out with Winter Orb, and then of course just pound them for damage for holding all these cards in their hand. With of course a lot of neat little things. Um, there was a couple combos when I tried playing it. I really liked the idea of the alternate win conditions of different type of decks. So the fact that you draw, I mean, I had one game and you draw three, four cards a turn. Love it. And then of course you have to be able to keep up that one blue man every turn to keep your stasis in play. So when you're drawing so many cards, chances are you're going to be able to have enough islands to keep it running. So that's kind of the idea there. Uh, Edwin also made a comment, if you want to show me real quick, yeah. about the Time Vault. You had some other weird combo yeah, so, with it. So there's a combo with the Stasis and the Time Vault. What happens is, let's say you got a Stasis in play and there's one in your hand. And your opponent is taking turns and they're getting all this vice damage, right? Your, so your Time Vault starts tapped. So what you do is you skip your turn because you don't want to have to pay the mana. So let's even say all your blue mana is tapped. You have you ever see? Have you ever heard of anybody who's playing Time Vault because they want to skip their turn so they can exactly. keep Stasis going? How amazing is that? Yeah, you that... want to lose your turns. That is the coolest thing ever. So that part is different. So let's say all your mana is tapped out. So you, you've done Stasis as long as you can. So you intentionally skip your turn, and then your opponent gets one more turn eating Black Vice damage with Stasis. Then on that your next turn, you don't pay the upkeep, stasis goes away, and then you draw cards, play lands, then you time walk yourself, basically. And then on that next turn, since the stasis is gone, now all your lands untap, and you draw cards again, and now you basically get to replay the next stasis in your hand and keep them locked. And you even having like emergency things that get reset were very undervalued. I don't even think how much is that? Like 20 bucks? Yeah. Reset's not very much. For especially for a stasis deck. And if you have a ton of lands, a ton of mock, I mean you can I mean, it's, you can keep them in that You can lock. keep it going, yeah. You can keep it going for a while, especially if you have all islands. So I think it's really cool. Uh, Relic Barrier, how does that fit in? So the Relic Barrier, what happens oftentimes is when you don't have a stasis going and you only have one Winter Orb in play just to keep their mana locked down, you can use the Relic Barrier to tap your own Winter Orb so all your mana untaps. The other thing you can use the Relic Barrier for is if I play Howling Mine and I don't have a lot of combo going yet, and I don't want them to get the extra cards. I can lock down the Howling Mine on their upkeep. So I get to draw, but they don't get the extra card. Another thing you can do with the Relic Barrier is if you're tapping down all their mana and then they play like a Soul Ring onto the table, you can lock it down. Right? I thought you were going to say pretty much if you once you skip a turn on Time Vault and it's untapped, you would actually just retap it and then skip another turn. You could do that. Actually. Can you do that? Yeah, you could you could keep on using the relic barrier to tap the time vault the to more skip turn, turns for the yeah to, the more turns you skip you're gonna keep pinging them for damage because they're drawing so much and you don't have to pay as much for your stasis you could do that in so theory right you in theory you definitely could but most of the time I use the relic barrier to tap down their moxes because when they have mana that's a threat or I tap down the howling mines so they don't get the extra cards but most of the time I tap down the winter orb so I get to untap all my mana even though they're locked down still and if we're gonna transmute what artifact do you go for most of the time if i have a stasis in play and probably one in my hand i'll transmute for the time vault okay. so i can do that little combo but oftentimes like as you found you're digging for your your black vices you got them yeah. locked but you don't have damage so you transmute and then you go get a black vice something that needs to be mentioned about this though everybody thinks of tinker where you you tinker right. and then you have to sack an artifact in order to play tinker 
this isn't the same. You play this, and they have to decide at that moment if they're going to counter it or not. If they counter it, I don't have to sacrifice the artifact. If they don't counter it, and I don't even have to declare what I'm going to sacrifice. As it resolves, I get to pick any artifact in play, and it goes away. Then I can pay extra mana and kind of trade up to something else that I actually needed. So the, the transmute artifact, people forget what a good card that actually is. It's actually, in some ways, it's better than Tinker. Now, it's, what's your favorite time to use the Twiddles? Is that for... Of course, Time Vault is, is the best time for Twiddle. Okay. So like hit this and then you get a free Time Walk. Right. But another thing is, let's say I'm playing Stasis on you and you play a Sarah Angel. Or you play a Jazam and I'm at four life and I'm going to die. Then I'll Twiddle it and I'll lock down your creature. So you're not going to get that untapped. So you can actually use it against me again. Okay. Or um, if you actually, I did this to Dan actually the other day. Like he played a Lotus when I had him under Stasis, but he wasn't ready to combo out yet. But I twiddled his his Black Lotus, so he never got a chance to use it because it just locked it down. I would assume also uh, your recall here. There's times you're probably gonna want to recall your opponent. Yes. Because that's one thing that everybody always said. Devices. When would you ever make your opponent draw three cards? I've heard that so many times over this the years. Deck. And I think this is the first time I've seen a deck that would actually make me want to recall and give it to my opponent. Because everyone over the years was always like, why would you give your opponent three cards? That was a very common thing people used to say when it said you can, you can draw it or you can pretty much give somebody else the draw. Exactly. This, that that's was, a kill uh, shot in this deck. When you got four vices or a couple vices, even Dude, if you got down, two or three, if you got three vices out, not even four, and someone's got seven cards in their hand. Yeah, that's a kill shot. Well, that's a, was nine damage? Yep. I mean, that's and a, another thing to consider, this deck, as you saw, was very tempo-based. And you got the boomerangs here, right? The boomerangs not only allow me to pull a stasis, whereas back to my hand, so all my stuff untaps, but I could also pull back a winter orb to untap all my stuff. Or if you try to disenchant something like my time vault, I can boomerang it back up. So I can use it as a defense card to save my cards. But also, let's say you ritual out that specter, or you get that jazam onto the table, or you know the, the basalt monolith power artifact combo. You can use this like an offensive card to put cards back into the opponent's hand because they tap out all their mana to get something on the table to threaten you, and you bounce it back to their hand. And now that all their mana is locked, and that's when you drop the stasis. Basically. And these factories is just in case you just need to do some old-fashioned two-two creature attacking. That yeah, so they in can case. they can be the alternate win condition, but most of the time it's just there for a little bit more blocking, just to give me a little bit more time to find my combo pieces. And Time Twister is... how I don't understand how Time Twister fits into this thing. So the Time Twister, basically, just even knowing that this is in my deck, allows me to aggressively play those boomerangs. Like, let's say I, ha I don't yet have my combo pieces, but I have boomerangs. And I need to slow you down, and I got Howling Minds, and we're both drawing cards, right? But you're tapping four or five mana to play a creature. If I just boomerang it for two, boomerang it for two, I keep doing that. So I've kept you tripped up, and now I'm ready to like combo out, but all the pieces I need are like in my graveyard. So knowing that I have a twist in my deck lets me aggressively play spells out of my hand because I know I can get them back in. So it's really the graveyard recursion. But since Time Twister also fills your hand back up, if I have you locked and I twist, you're going to die from the vices. So why no Force of Will then? If This is a lockout deck and Force of Will is a counter spell that you can use alternate pain. On the because card. it's old school. And Force of Will is not allowed because we go all the way up to Fallen Empires. So unfortunately okay, so there's no Force of okay, Will. Okay, so that's the only reason why? Yeah, that's the only reason. Otherwise okay. it would for sure. Because I was going to say, it seems like if you're doing a lockout deck, you'd want alternate. And there's like some... Phyrexian mana type cards, you know? Exactly. There's one other thing that's really important. Notice that there's Power Sync. There's not Counter Spell. There's Power Sync. That's true. And the reason why is because Power Sync, people always forget, this forces the opponent to tap their mana. If they can't respond to the Power Sync, all their lands get locked down. And that's exactly what I want to do. So what will happen sometimes is people, they have like a, just say they got a Serendip Efreet they want to cast, or a Jazam. And they put a Mox on the table thinking that's going to be it. I Power Sync the Mox, and I don't care about the Mox, but since I Power Sync their Mox, it counters the Mox and it locks all the rest of their mana, and now they can't cast the creature. So the power wow. sinks are literally just to lock them down. And you came up with all this? Or yes. did you was this based on another deck you saw? No. No, I came up with this. How long did it take you? Um, I started I had this on my YouTube channel. I started with one version and I kept refining it and eventually went mono blue. And then I eventually added the red in. So it's gone through like four revisions. I'd say like three months of refining and playing to kind of come up with it. And I'm still trying to get the sideboard like worked out. And I've shared the sideboard with some other people internally. Like I've let them know what I'm currently doing with it. And I don't want to release that yet for Turbo Stasis 2.4. Cool. So do you want to sell it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> How much do you want? This is my only yeah, set of Power want... 9 and my only Volcanics and stuff. If I sell this, I, I can't play anymore. So, <laughs> But thank you, though. 
Uh, Edwin, thanks for coming in. If you guys want to check it, he has a YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. I appreciate everybody. Very cool stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. You guys have a fantastic day. Very cool. Bye, everybody. Um, Edwin, are you sure you don't want to sell the deck? I mean, there's nothing. Like, yeah. Do you have, everybody has a price. There's no nothing. Come no, on. It's no. Nah, I don't pressure. want to sell it. No. Sell, sell the no, deck. Nah. Sell, I don't want to sell it. Buy it. Buy the hitbox.